you can use the camera to animate a still image. Now, I know that doesn't make much sense because still images are two-dimensional, but you can put a still image in a program like Photoshop and select part of an area and lift it away from the background and then bring that into After Effects and do the kind of multi-planing animation we did when we worked with just the null object layer in a three-dimensional space. So to show you how to do this, I'm going to open up Photoshop and then go to After Effects. Now, if you've never worked with a program like Photoshop, this may be kind of a waste of time, but you might just want to follow along just to see how it's done. So first of all, let's go to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. We've got this image here that started its life as a JPEG file, just a straight photograph. that's already been converted into a Photoshop file with three layers here, but it started just as this background image here. And then I copied the background twice and worked on both layers. The one on top here, I took the selection tool and just used it to select the man and the boy. And then when I was done selecting them, I converted that selection into a mask. And the mask looks something like this. And the mask then makes part of the area opaque and part of the area transparent, just as they do inside After Effects. Click that off. Now you can see what it looks like. It looks like that. So now that I've lifted this away from the background, I need to convert the background into something that does not include these guys. Now, the way you do that is you select them, you put that selection around them again, and then you go down to the copy of the background layer that I made earlier. I'll turn this one off. This is not the copy, but I made the copy up here, but I'll just show you for this particular layer. You go down to the copy of that one in the background, and then you do what's called a content aware fill. Now, that won't work on this background layer because you can't change that, but if I click on this one now, I'll show you what it looks like when I turn it on. You do a content aware fill, and it fills this stuff in with the grass around it. It looks like that. I'll do Control D or Command D to undo the selection. Now, when I did that, there were some edges that you could see there. They're indistinct, but they are sharp enough that you want to get rid of them. So the way that you get rid of the edges is by using the Spot Healing Brush tool. You just paint along those edges there using a content-aware fill for the brush right there. And that took care of all those edges. Pretty slick. Go over to this other one here. Did the same thing here. Had a little complexity because of the veil there. I couldn't really have that image showing up in the veil because that image would be static while we move the background when we do this camera motion inside After Effects. So I got rid of that part, but then I just made this part of the veil a little bit transparent in the mask. The way you do that is you just paint a little bit of gray there in the mask, and that makes that area somewhat transparent so you can see those flowers showing through. All right, so I've got these two images. Now we're going to open them up in After Effects. And to do that, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and go on down to 1805 Animation Stills. We'll start by working with the man and boy comp because it's easier to work with this one. These images on their own are both fairly large. If you look at just this one here, you see it's 3600 by 2395, pretty large. So I put them inside an HD comp there like that, which is smaller, and we'll then speed up the processing. The first thing I want to do is I want to adjust their position in Z space. So I turn on 3D for them. There you go. And I want to move the content to where fill way back. So I'm going to go on down here to position for that one. So I click on U and click on P for position. I'm going to change the distance there to about 4,000. That'll move it back pretty far. That'll, of course, make it pretty small as well. So I go Shift S for scale. And now I'm going to scale that guy up until it more or less fills the screen there like that. What I want to do is I want to go much wider than that because we're going to have the camera pan across this. So I want it to go beyond the edges of the screen. So I'm going to turn off this little link here. I just want to make it wider. So we'll spread things out a little bit like that. I could leave the link on, but, you know, let's just spread it out like this. I think it still looks realistic. Nice real grass there. All right, and now we're going to leave the man and the boy at zero, at the zero position. I'll show you that by pressing P for position. Keep them at zero. So they're up close to the camera. Now let's add a camera. I'll close these guys down like that. Right-click here and say New Camera. We'll take the default two node, 50 millimeter, and click OK. Now there's the camera, and let's just try it out. I'm gonna go get the unified camera tool here. And right now I'm just gonna take a look at this just as it's set up now. I'm going to click on the middle button, my middle scroll wheel here, and just kind of go across. You notice how you gotta watch out we don't lift them up like that. But if you just kind of go across, you see how the guys in the foreground are moving faster than the background there. And you can do a nice little animation like this, just a simple animation here. Now, the fact that you don't see their feet is helpful because you would see them sliding across the grass. So 
that's just something you need to be aware of here. They will not be attached to the grass here. That's just one little issue you got to deal with when you're doing these kind of multi-planing motion here with images that have had the foreground separated from the background. You don't have to have just one foreground element. You could have multiple foreground elements and position them in space. You don't have to be one right up here at the front and background only in the back. You can have these guys spread out over its space, and so they'll actually interact with each other. Let's go take a look at the bride and the flower girl. We'll do the same thing with them. Let's put them in the 3D first. There you go. And let's adjust their position. So I'm going to click on both of them and then go to P for position. And we'll take the content aware fill there back to, let's say, 4,000 as well for them. 4,000. And you can see we need to scale that up. So Shift S for scale. Bring that up like so. There we go. And I'm going to just also have that stretched out a bit because I don't want to get the flowers too far away. So I'll unlink these guys and we'll pull these guys to the right and spread them out quite a bit like so. There we go. And now we're going to add a camera. So I'll just right click, new camera. Do the same thing as before, take the previous one. And now if I take the unified camera tool and drag across there, you're going to notice that things are sliding around. I'll do this here and you see that their dress is sliding along in the grass there. So this is one of those issues where you need to have them off the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to click on the bride and the flower girl and click on my V for my selection tool and bring them down, way down, because they got to get the girl's feet off there as well. So now they're getting a little smallish, so we're going to scale them up a little bit. So press Shift S for scale and we'll make them a little bit larger so they have a little more prominence in the picture like that. And because we're kind of moving things around like this, we probably want to blur the background. So we'll do that with the camera in a second. But do notice the veil here, that transparency does let those flowers show through right at that line. If I kept this other veil in here, it wouldn't work because the line was so distinct here with the flowers and you would have seen it moving around. But this part works pretty well. All right, I want to have them kind of over to the left just a little bit, I think. I want to kind of have the camera animation go toward them. And then I'll just show you how the camera looks now. Let's just see how it works this time. We'll start right about here, click on the unified camera tool and just click on the center scroll wheel and move it over like so. Now you can see that that's working pretty well, I think. But let's make the background kind of go out of focus. So I'm going to open up the camera here and take a look at the camera options. Depth of field is on, but the aperture is small. The smaller the aperture, the longer, the wider, the deeper the depth of field. You want to narrow down the depth of field so it's just focusing on the bride and the flower girl. So to kind of see where that is, just change the view to two views for a moment here. And let's just see, well, there is the focus plane right there, right on them. And there's the background back there. So the focus is right on them as you would expect it to be because the focus by default goes to zero when you make a new camera. So that's good. So go back to one view and let's just increase the size of the aperture, which makes the f-stop smaller if you're into that kind of stuff. The bigger we get, the more we're going to blur that background. There we go. So now it's a little more distinctive when we see these two folks in the front. Take our unified camera tool and click the scroll wheel again and drag it across here. And now you can see them going up against the background like that. I think it looks pretty great. You can animate this left-right motion as well, of course. So there you go. That's how you take a flat still image, lift one or more elements out of the background, fill the background with content-aware fill, and then animate it using the camera here inside After Effects.